Hi everyone, that was a little bit of chord melody playing. That's from an arrangement of When Irish Eyes Are Smiling by James Hill. Chord melody is an absolutely lovely way to play the ukulele and it's quite literally when we play chords and melodies at the same time. In this video we're going to do the most easy peasy lemon squeezy chord melody we can think of just to explain a very simple way to get you into chord melody playing and show you the mechanics of how it all works. So first of all, let's have a look at the two parts individually. What's a melody and what are chords or harmony? So the melody in any piece of music is the individual notes that make up the core part of the piece of music. It's the bit that you would sing. So we're going to look at a really simple song, one that everyone knows. It's a bit ABC, but it's a good thing because it gets you to learn the mechanics of what we're doing. We're going to do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. In fact, I think we may have looked at this slightly in the beginner's course. So the melody in Twinkle Twinkle is the part that you would sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. That part, right? There's our melody. And the harmony or the chords behind it are what you would strum if you were singing and strumming at the same time. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. So there is the harmony or the chords. And in chord melody, we need to simply find a way of moulding those two together. Now, there are two main ways of doing this. I can either fill in the gaps in between melody notes with chords. So take Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. We've got some gaps, very short ones in between the notes. Gap, 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 gap. And I can quite simply just put chords in those gaps. Noticed after I play a melody note, almost inst instantaneously, I'm filling the gap with a chord. And we're going to look at that today. I'm going to show you physically how to do that. The other way which we're going to look at in another video later on, it's a bit more complicated, so it needs its own video or a series of videos even. Um, that's to play the chords and the melody instantaneously. And in that later video, I'll show you how to do it, which sounds something like this. Notice the melody note and the chord being played at exactly the same time. There's also a third way which involves using a mixture of both. But again, we'll look at that in a much later video. But think of it as two main ways, filling in the gaps or putting chords at exactly the same moment we play a melody note. So here's my trusty blackboard. Ta-da! <laughs> and I've used something called tablature to give you a visual representation of the melody for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. So we're going to do the melody first, then the chords, and then we're going to put the two together. Don't panic if you've never seen tablature written down um, before in your life. I'm going to explain it briefly here, but also in the links under the video, I'm going to give a link to a video from my Uke Theory playlist where I spend a long time talking about tablature and explaining it in a lot more detail. So if you feel that you need to brush up on your tablature skills, have a watch of the video in the links and then come back and you'll soon be able to piece this together. But even without watching it, I think you'll get the idea and you'll be able to play it. So tablature is most basic. It's a visual representation of the strings on the ukulele. The only problem is they're upside down. <laughs> if we think of our ukulele here and we're looking up towards the strings, the bottom line in tablature going across represents your G string, the one nearest your nose. The next one up represents the C string. The next one up represents the E string. And finally, the top one represents the A string. So you kind of have to think upside down. So imagine your eyes are here looking up G string, C string, E string, A string. OK, these lines going down in measures. Don't worry about that for now. That We don't need to worry about that today. So if the lines going across tell you which string is which, the 
numbers here tell you which fret to pick of that string. So for instance here, it's telling us to pick the first fret, because I have a number one written in there, of the E string, because notice the third one down is the E string. So if we were to pick the first fret of the E string, G, C, E, we would have an F note. Number one for first fret, this line representing the E string. And you'll notice if you can just about see, I've actually written the note in just to help you if you prefer to think in terms of notes rather than tablature. So here we have an F and an F. I'm actually going to um, send a link to this um, whiteboard as a PDF in the notes. So if you find it easier to print these and literally you, you can take them away and do them away from the video, they're going to be available as PDFs as well. So don't panic if, if you miss anything. We can go back and look at the prints. So let's learn the melody. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Again, really, really simple melody that everyone knows. And that's why I've picked it. It's not the most interesting thing but it's going to allow you to really see how the mechanics of chord melody works. So let's learn it. We're going to play the C string twice, and the zero means that we're not fingering any of the frets because there's a zero. There's not one, two or three, just a zero. So this is our C string here, second one down from your nose, even though it's the second one up on tablature. Confusing, isn't it? We're just going to pick that twice. C. C. Okay, and you'll notice I've written in green the notes next to it. So there's a C note and another C note. Fantastic. Twinkle. The amazing thing of this song, and this is part of the reason I chose it, as well as it, it, it being really recognisable, is that a lot of it uses what we call open notes, where we're not pressing any frets at all. You notice the next measure here, we've got two G notes. We could play a G note here, like when we were learning our scales in the last series. But to keep things simple when we're doing chords, we're actually just going to touch the top string here, the one nearest your nose, for a G note like this. There we go. And notice I'm just picking these notes with my thumb. OK, I'm using the middle part of my thumb. I'm picking the notes roughly where the body of the ukulele meets the neck, because that's where the sweet spot is. And I'm doing something called a rest stroke on this one. When I hit that G note, notice that I'm resting my thumb on that C string. I'm not playing it, just resting it. That gives a really nice clear note here. And it stops me accidentally playing two strings. That's called a rest stroke. So we're gonna do the same thing on the C. Let's try those two Cs again. Then let's try the next string up nearest your nose for two Gs. There we've got our twinkle twinkle. We've got another two open notes next. Notice they're on the A string, the one nearest the floor on your ukulele. So we're gonna pick that open twice like this. Now we can't do a rest stroke there because there's no string underneath the A string, is there? We've run out of strings. So we just pick it and keep your thumb nearby. Don't move it way off down here. Fantastic. And then finally, to finish off the second line, we've got one more G note and we're just going to let that ring out for the whole measure. So if we put that together very slowly, we have two C's, two G's, two A's and another G. Have a practice of that with me after four. Two, three, four. And G's. A's nearest the floor. Back to G at the top. Fantastic. Let's finish it off. Now we do have a fretted note here. Remember the number doesn't tell you what finger to use but it tells you what fret to press. So we're going to press here for an F note, not an F chord, an F note, first fret of the E string, the third one down from your nose to toes. Let's play that twice. That gives us our F notes. We've got more open notes now, two E's, that's the string we're just pressing, but this time with our finger off. Two D's, that's the second fret of the C string, the second one down. 
and to finish off one low C just that second string down from your nose open fantastic there we go now notice when I played these F's even though I said the number didn't represent my finger I did use my first finger and when I played these D notes here I did use my second finger for the second fret and that's just because it's easier to remember where my fingers are and it's really good practice if you can get used to doing that. So the whole melody all together, two, three, four C's, G's, A's and one G. Now F's, off for E's, D's at the second fret, next string up, and off for C. Well done, twinkle twinkle little star, the first section. So how do we turn this melody into a chord melody? Well, we're gonna use the first method by just really simply putting chords in the gaps. And the gaps are gonna be after each one of our notes. So we're gonna put a chord in here. We're gonna put a chord in here here and here. There's our first line. We've put a chord in each of the gaps. Well, how do we know what chord to play? Well, it's quite simple. Almost every form of sheet of music will have the chords written above the tablature or the standard notation. So here we have a, a chord in a circle, which is telling us that for this line, the chord would be C. Twinkle, twinkle. There's our chord, C. So quite simply, we just need to strum a C after each of these melody notes. So we could play a C melody note, strum a C chord. Another C melody note, strum a C chord. Then we have a G melody note. That's a top string open nearest your nose. Strum, there's a C chord, and again. So if I put that all together, I have C note, C chord, C note, C chord, G note, C chord. And I'm starting to get a chord melody. Now, let's notice something. Notice that I put my C chord on for the whole of the duration of this line. Because we know it's always going to be a C chord for the whole of this line, if I hold that finger in place for a C chord, it means whenever I need to strum a chord, all I need to do is strum down with my thumb. So I have those melody notes, chords. Okay. Note, chord, note, chord. And the same thing with this one. I'm still on a C chord. Note, chord, note, chord. Note, chord. Try it with me after four. We're going to play it nice and slowly. One, two, three, four. No chord, no chord. Then G notes. Fantastic. We're starting to build a chord melody. Isn't that cool? Okay, the next line's slightly different. We change chord now. Do you notice up here we have an F chord now? So in the gaps here, when we play our chords, we're actually going to play F chords, okay? Now, just like we did up here with the Cs, what I want you to do is hold an F chord down for the entire measure. So we know we're going to need to play F chords in here, so we hold that F chord down the whole time. Now, how do we hold that F chord down and play an A note at the same time? Well, notice with an F chord, there's no finger on that A string, that bottom string. So to play the A note, we just pick the string nearest the floor with our thumb. There's our A note. And to strum an F, we just strum down. So we have A chord, A chord. Try it me after four, two, three, four. No chord, no chord. Fantastic. And then to finish off this line, we're back to a C chord. So we've got a big gap here as well. So let's strum three C chords just to fill up the measure. So we're going to strum each of these arrows just represents a down strum. OK, so we're going to strum a C chord now three times. 
Remember, we're going to hold that C chord down for the whole measure. So even before we hit this G note, the one on the top string nearest your nose, we're going to have our finger down ready for a C chord. So we have two, three, four, G, strum, strum, strum. Fantastic. I'm going to play through these first two lines just on my own first so you can hear how it works and how it sounds. Remember, I'm holding down whichever chord is placed up here. And then every time we get an orange bit, I'm just strumming. It really is that simple. Might take you a few goes round to get it, but let me try first, so see if you can get the idea. Notice we're having the melody come through and the chords, isn't that neat? Let's try it together nice and slow after four. One, two, three, four. you're on the way. Let's have a look at the next two bits. Notice, always pay attention to what chord is at the top. We're playing an F chord now. So I'm going to strum F chords twice here in the gaps. Now, we've got a melody note here which involves putting our finger down. First fret of that E string, see? But notice when we play an F chord, our finger is in the right place for that note. So with this measure, if we hold down an F chord for the whole time, all we've got to do for the notes is make sure we're picking the E string, the third one down. So we pick that E string and strum. And because we've got that finger on the F note, not just the F chord, the F note, when we pick the E string, we have an F. F note, chord, F note, chord. Okay. So that measure, two, three, four. Great stuff. Next measure is a nice easy one again. Open notes. We're going to put chords here and here. These are going to be, what chords are it going to be? C, right? Because there's a C there. So these strums are going to be C strums. Just like before, and I'm going to say it again and again because it's so important. Have your finger ready for the chord before you start the measure. So rather than doing this, which is kind of awkward, isn't it? Just have your finger on that C chord, but know we're going to hit the E string for an E note. And strum down. And I can strum all the way down. Fantastic, that's that measure. Let's try this line then. I'll try it first. Let's give it a go. Get your F chord ready. After four, we're going to pick the note first, then strum. Two, three, four. Note, chord, note, chord, note, chord, note. Chord. Absolutely brilliant. Let's look at the last bit. Now we've got a G7 chord now. Okay, this is the G7 chord is the fifth chord in this key of C and it makes you want to go back to the start. That's why that whole measure exists. It makes you want to go back to this C here, which makes everything feel finished. So notice something cool happens here and this I really want you to soak this in because it's really kind of liberating once you realise this happens. A lot of the time, the melody note that is chosen, not always, but quite often, the melody note features in the chord. So our melody note here are, is the second fret of the C string. OK, C string, C string, second fret. That gives a D note. C, D. OK, if you remember our scale of C. That second note there is a D. Now notice when we play a G7 chord, which is this one, our finger is in the right place for that D note, right? 
So we don't need to kind of put this chord down after we've played the note. We can hold a G7 chord for the whole of that measure. And we just pick the second string down from our nose for a D, strum, do it again. So we're playing the second fret of the e, uh, C string even and strumming twice. And that's it, that's that measure. And then to finish off, we have a C chord. So we're gonna strum a C chord. And because we've got a big gap, let's strum that three times. And before we strum it, we're gonna hit this low C note here, second string down, like that. And then we're gonna strum three times. That simple. Notice I have my chord held down even when I hit this first note. So all I've got to do is strum. Okay. So this bottom line now, if I have my G7 ready, will sound like this. Let's give it a go. Two, three, four. No chord, no chord, no strum, strum, strum. Fantastic. Should we try the whole thing? Let's give it a go. After four. One, two, three, four. G note. Now hold an F chord down. Isn't that cool? A really simple chord melody. If that was a bit fast, because I've, I've covered a lot of information, haven't I, in this video really, really quickly. Just take it slow. You can go literally as slow as you want. So if your fingers aren't quite ready for that playthrough, just break it down. For instance, this first line, have your C ready and just take one note at a time and don't play the next thing until you're sure you're gonna hit the right thing. So we could do note, there's our arrow for strum, note, strum. Then we're changing our melody note to a G string, strum. Then we're changing to an F chord, so hold an F chord down. And the note is this A here, strum, note, strum. And then we're changing to a C chord. We're hitting that G note and strumming three times. And you can just literally go through it like that at your own pace, just going note, chords, note, chords. And then the more you get confident with it, you'll be able to speed it up. You end up with a really, really lovely sounding chord melody. Now, of course, what we've done so far is just the start and end of Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, isn't it? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Now we need the middle bit. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. So just so we've completed it, I'm going to go through this relatively quickly, purely because I'm running it out of time a bit for the YouTube video. But just so you've got a chance to complete the whole thing rather than just half the song, let's have it here. I'll do a PDF of this as well in the link so you can print this off so you have the whole thing together. But the same principle is going on here. And the whole of this bit, by the way, we're going to play twice. So this is the middle section, if you like, that you play twice. And then you just go back to the start again to finish it off. So let's have a look what's happening. C chord. So we hold a C chord down right from the start of the measure. The note is the top string nearest your nose. Open. So that's a G. And then we strum. Simple as that. G note, C chord. Then, because we have an F, we hold down an F chord for the whole measure. And our finger's in the right place to hit an F note, which is here, which is the first fret of the E string. So we hit the F note first with our thumb, strum a chord. And we do that again. Okay, so that line, we've got C chord with a G note. F chord with an F note first. We have a C chord with an E note. That's the third string down from your nose. Just picked and strum a C. 
And then finally, just like we did in the last section, we've got a G chord and a melody note D. That one there is in the chord. So we just hold down a G7, pick the second string down from our nose and strum three times. And the only reason we're strumming three times there is because we've got a bigger gap to fill. It really is that simple. So let's play all of that through. Let's play it twice, so the whole of the middle section. So starting with that G note and C string. Two, three, four. F note and F chord. E note and C chord. D note and G chord, or G7. And then we do it again. There we go. Let me play the whole thing through once so you can get an idea of how it sounds. Notice we're hearing the melody notes and then instantaneously we're filling in with the chords and we know which chords to play because it tells us at the top and we know which melody notes to play because it tells us here. And a quick reminder, hold that chord shape down through the whole measure. Let's try the whole thing. You can play along if you're confident enough, but if not, just enjoy the sound of it so you can get an impression of how it sounds. So from the start, not just this section, right back to the start. Two, three, four. There you go, twinkle, twinkle, little star in chord melody. Now, even if that was a bit too much for you so far, if it was a bit too quick, you weren't quite able to keep up, don't worry at all. All I want you to get from this is the principles involved. And this is the really liberating and amazing thing. And this is why I always try and teach as much as possible, okay? It's not about technique. It is about technique. But in terms of learning for the moment, just concentrate on the principles. Because if you can understand how this works, you can make your own chord melodies. All you need is a melody and chords. And that's written down, isn't it? In most pieces of sheet music. And you can do this yourself. And when I started playing chord melody, that was when, for me, the ukulele really took off. And I thought, wow, it has so many possibilities. And I really want you to discover the same. So enjoy it. Take that slowly, work on each section at the time, print it off if you find easier and get back to me with any questions.